what up, everybody? Uh, we are here today to commemorate the old Ben Bankus. This is the new Ben Bankus. Uh, I've completely lost my mind, and uh, this T-shirt is for sale on my website. Guys, I, I, I'm joining the satanic cult. I don't care anymore. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm pro pro vaccine now. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. People are going to like freak out if I say shit like that. That is scare people. No, but I am an alien. And by that, I mean, I look a little bit Chinese with these glasses on. And if you're listening at home, you can't see the glasses I'm wearing, but uh, you best believe that these are um, top of the line for a comedian to own a pair of sunglasses like this. That makes me, it really makes me, f it, I feel trans. I'm trans species right now, trans race. Um, definitely trans race. I want to be Chinese. I don't want to get the surgery, though, but I'm down to, you know, just start squinting more. <laughs> Fuck around, guys. Welcome to the show. If you, uh, is this your first episode? Let me know in the comments if this is your first episode listening to the show. A lot of stuff has happened in the last week. We live in a time now where a week is an insane amount of time for news items. Like there are so many things for us to talk about. So today we're going to uh, talk about a few things. Mall, what was that? The mall alien. That was, that, that happened within the last week. Did that not? There was an alien at a mall in Miami, apparently. Um, or it was just a bunch of black kids. That that's how you know black Twitter is the best because they can create a situation where a thousand black kids go to a mall and just start mass robbing people, and black Twitter just goes, "Yo, there's aliens at the mall," and people believe it because there's panic and people want to see aliens. People, if there's aliens in the mall, you'd be less scared if there was a thousand black kids. One alien walking around the mall versus a thousand hoodlums. What what's more concerning, right? Like if there's an alien at the mall and I'm there, I'm going. I'm part of something viral. I'm part of something big. You know, I I understand life more than ever now. But if I go and there's a thousand black kids robbing people, then I am genuinely concerned for my 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 safety. A lot of people have been accusing me online that my shirts are too small. I had a couple of videos go viral in the last week where my shirt, um, you can see my gut hanging out of my shirt. And was it on purpose? No. Did I know my gut was hanging out? No. That's why it's viral. Because I didn't know and I went hard as if I had a properly fitting shirt. And that really upsets people. And I, I understand it. It upset me. I actually grappled with posting that video for many days i was going to my ed my video editor like can we just do all zoomed in he's like no i think it's funny actually that your gut's out fine and of course four and a half million views later the gut the gut is gold and it's unfortunate because i could really just become that guy i could just become the guy that has the gut out in every video and i really don't want to do that and i want to let my fans know that was genuinely not on purpose that my gut was hanging out, although it was funny. So, you know, that's how that's how legends are made. Human monkey animal hybrid. That was made from similar situation. Thank you for listening to the podcast on YouTube. Don't forget you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your free podcasts. Please like and subscribe on your favorite platform or all of them. <laughs> yeah, maybe all my merch should be um, one size fit fits all and they're all just really small shirts i also have fucking sparkles all over every single piece of my clothing right now because for some reason my fiance washed uh my, my our kids dress with with all of our shit like some princess dress so now that now i just have i fucking i put a sparkle in my eyeball the other day putting my contacts on i mean this is this is out of control yeah, now I feel fucking gay. Everything I have on has sparkles on it. I don't want to fucking live like this. But anyway, to all the people out there trying to shit on me for having my shirts be too small, 
I just want to let you know that um, I got four and a half million videos on a video of you hating me. So thank you. Thank you to the haters. We need the haters. That's like when I pissed off that Korean bitch six months ago. You guys don't even know about that. I trained for this moment. You understand? I trained for this. I've been through the trenches. I upset a woman named Sug on TikTok, and she has like 3 million followers, and they're all just like psychotic Democrat leftists. I know I'm wearing a Jean Basquiat shirt, but is that what it's called? Jean-Michel Basquiat. Basquiat. I got this Basquiat shirt because I'm, I'm doing a little bat signal to Hollywood. I'm ready to play, baby. I got my, but this is my Olivia Chow racist shirt. So it's like, you, you, you know what I mean? Maybe I canceled it out. It's like, this is like the ginger to the wasabi. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I piss off all these liberal people that were, that just like live with cats in these small homes and they all came after me. They tried to get a bunch of my venues canceled last year and all it did was help me so i just want to let you guys know that we out here we out here making fun of everything including the basquiat by the way this was 70 percent off so i was like 70 percent off to make all my fans think i joined a satanic cult that's that's a fucking steal guys i have not joined a satanic cult i want to assure you that that is not the case and uh, although I've started dressing like this and my hair magically stands up now, uh, this is purely, this is, a, you know, it's just a coincidence, really, that I look like this all of a sudden. It has nothing to do with any phone calls that I had with any Illuminati or, you know, deep state people that are now on my side that are excited for me to come to the U.S. This is purely for um shits and gigs hope you're enjoying yeah i mean trump will probably be on the ballot and that upsets people i want to tell a story right now about how i met a democrat the other day at my gym so i work out at a jewish community center and i'm in the whirlpool i got my dick out which i probably should stop doing now that i'm becoming famous just walking around the dressing room willy-nilly but there was another dude in there with his dick out so we started talking in the whirlpool in like the hot tub right and he was all like talking with the you know he had atlanta georgia accent and i was like where are you from he's like i'm from atlanta and i was like she so moved here he said yeah so he he immigrated from the u.s to canada and he's telling me, he goes, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to rescind my American citizenship. And I go, oh, so you must be a Democrat. And he goes, he's all, like, whoa, whoa. I'm like, he's like, we must be on very different wavelengths. I'm like, well, it's obvious because no Republican would ever rescind <laughs> their U.S. citizenship. So he, he admits that he's a Democrat. He goes, well, yeah, I'm a Democrat. I'm not a fascist. And I'm like, well, you know, a lot of people here in Canada think that Trudeau's fascist. And he was like, oh, well, we must be on completely different sides, whatever. But anyway, we ended up just having a conversation. And he just said that he didn't, you know, he likes Canada better. And he felt that that it was more humane. And I agree with him in some ways that Canada might be more humane. But Canada wouldn't exist without the USA. I mean... We wouldn't exist, uh, our security wouldn't exist, the fact that, you know, we have so much peace in this part of the world wouldn't exist. So people who are afraid to live in America and rather move to a country like Canada or I'm going to move to Sweden or I'm going to move to some socialist country, you're kind of a pussy. You're, you're just a pussy that... You know, you couldn't make it in a capitalist society, so now you want to go live in a communist society. Just be honest about it. You know, like he was trying to say, like, oh, I think the healthcare here is better. I'm like, dude, if if by you don't have to write a check when you go, meaning better, then yeah. But, 
dude, we have our MRI sh- machines versus an American hospital where you're pay- paying to play. Their MRI machines, like who's gonna have the newer shit? The one that's making hundred million dollars profit every year, it's five hundred million dollars profit, a billion dollars profit, or the one that's subsidized by the government and we've had the same shit since ninety five. You know what I mean? So that's just crazy. But anyway, it's crazy that you meet Americans coming here and I'm I'm trying to I want to be like, dude, you're gonna rescind your citizenship? Trade. <laughs> I'd rather be a uh, American, you can take my Canadian shit. Straight up. You know, I love Canada with all my heart, but I think a lot of my fans would be American if they had the choice. Like, a lot of my Canadian fans, if somebody came up to them and they were like, you move to America, same job or better, you know, you're gonna your money's going to go farther, obviously, with, with housing and shit. I think all my Canadian fans would be like, yeah, I'll, I'd be American in a heartbeat. So... Don't kid yourself, America. You're fucking, you're still great. I hate all these people, you know, as a Canadian and I'm trying to come to America and all these people are like, oh, America's bad. And America's... No, you're just, you're not cut out for it, maybe. And a lot of people aren't, but people are trying to risk their entire lives to get to America. Why? Because it sucks? No. People don't really risk their lives to get to Canada. They just go, okay, I'm going to take an airplane to Britain Airport and tell them I am a student. Right? And then they get a job doing Ubers. Enjoying the podcast? You'll love the weekly bonus podcast only on Patreon. Support Ben on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ben Bankus, and you can get access to over 35 hours of bonus content, including videos, stand-up clips, sketches, never released political dubs, and more. Yeah, they should have a trade program where you trade uh, your passport with somebody. You just be like, oh, this guy doesn't want to be Canadian anymore? Okay, I'll be Uruguayan or whatever the fuck. Um, but Trump on the ballot, people don't want Trump on the ballot, which... Like, the guy who's rescinding his American citizenship doesn't want Trump on the ballot. But guess what? He's saying that in public. Oh, I'm going to rescind my citizenship. But he's going to wait till the next election. He wants to vote against Trump. You can leave America and live in Canada and still vote for the president. So, you know, that that's a wild thing. He was complaining to me like, oh, I still have to pay my American taxes. It's like, dude, you're part of one of the greatest empires in the history of the world. And you're trying to rescind your citizenship. Like, what kind of cucky gay behavior is that it's sick um so i don't know i think trump should 100 percent be on the ballot all these people trying to say that he shouldn't be on the ballot because of some it's it's all to me it's all bullshit and maybe i'm wrong because i don't know enough but to me it sounds like you know it sounds like people want to cheat They want to say, oh, maybe we can't beat him fair and square, so we're going to make sure he can't be on the ballot. That's what it sounds like to me, and that's not right. You know, the whole idea of democracy is that the best ideas, let the best ideas win, and the ideas are chosen by the people. If a country is all of a sudden saying that, oh, the people don't know what's best for them, they don't know, they're going to vote for this guy, we can't allow this guy to be on the ballot because... If, you know, he's going to win and the people voting for him are racist and evil and they don't know what's best for him. That means we're not living in a, in, that. that's not democratic. I'm sorry. That's just not. Dem, dem, like, if, if half the population of a country agrees with somebody and you're trying to outlaw that, that's authoritarian. That's That's my little rant on that. Like in Canada, for instance, we had David Menzies who is a reporter for Rebel News, and he got arrested for trying to ask Christia Freeland questions. Now, Christia Freeland, she's the deputy prime minister. She used to be the minister of finance, but she obviously doesn't know anything about that because she's a woman. And uh, no, that's not why. It's because she looks like Lord Farquaad, okay? She looks like a little, she's like, she's got, she's very, she's got very stumpy features, Okay, and her grandfather was allegedly the an editor in like a Nazi magazine in Ukraine, and he was like a Nazi. So anyway, she's the deputy prime minister now of Canada, 
and reporters trying to ask him questions, her her questions, and gets cor- the the cop basically does like a like like a pump fake, and then he stumbles, walks right into the cop, and the cop's like, "You're under arrest for assault for assaulting the cop, not for assaulting her, Christian Freeland." Right, so. That was just kind of a weird situation. And then apparently now they're not charging him and all this stuff, which is good. But, you know, if you're not charging him, then there's no crime. So what, like, just stop with the, um, you know, the, the Christian Freeland comes out after and tries to say that the police don't take orders from the politicians and that, that was just a police decision, all this stuff. And it's like, obviously there's a conversation like there that's so such obvious lying and that should scare Americans too. When they see like free countries acting like that, where she's lying by saying, you know, Oh yeah, we totally didn't have a conversation with the cops like that. We've been hanging out with every day about don't let these guys ask me fucking questions. Like they're caught red handed. So I think people should be questioning that. And I don't think that is a small deal, right? And all these people who are totally okay with all the lockdowns and all the the symptoms of them trying to quell the virus in terms of social symptoms, all these people that were okay with it, all the Facebook warriors who were like, who were like, well, I do what I'm told, and that's what you're supposed to do for your fellow citizen. All those people are just good, you know. They put zip their mouths closed when they see the journalist getting accosted, and their basic opinion is, well, he's from Rebel, so it's not really journalism. Really, if it's not really journalism, then why is their Instagram and Facebook page not available to be seen in Canada? Because that's only for news companies. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say, oh, Rebel News isn't a real news company, but, well, they're real enough that their content is banned on Instagram and Facebook because that is a rule in Canada that Justin Trudeau basically came up with. Right? Like, let's say, like, he... he, he found a way to do it without doing it. And he doesn't... He's not outright saying we've banned Facebook and, and Instagram news, news on those platforms. He's coming out and saying, I've banned Facebook from profiting off of us, uh, you know, uh, posting news. And that's how it started, right? Oh, we don't, we want Canadian journalists to get more money for the news. Only the ones that he likes, the ones that he wants telling stories. It's very fucked up. And if you talk to people from CBC, some of them would slightly agree, but they'd be like, no, you'd be surprised on how many conservative points of view we read. No, no, no. And, and now CBC, really the only app you can watch CBC on, guess what it is? TikTok. TikTok. CBC last year said that they weren't going to post anymore on Twitter. Remember that? Because they were like, oh, Elon Musk took over and he's allowing more people to basically comment on our posts and call it as bullshit. So they got mad, said, we're not going to post on Twitter, Twitter anymore. Then what happened? Then they get banned from Facebook and Instagram. Twitter's the only place you can fucking watch CBC or TikTok, Chinese TikTok. You can go watch and they have a whole slew of videos on, on TikTok for CBC that they don't have anywhere else on any other apps. Right. And they only started really pushing these TikToks after they closed up um, Instagram, Facebook, and the TikToks are radical. A lot of them are super pro-Palestine, super uh, pro, you know, everything, gender, all uh, you know, all the sh- all the bullshit that we're seeing, all the bullshit that's associated with the shirt that I'm wearing, is uh, being pushed on TikTok by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And I'm excited to just be away from that monopoly. And I'm not saying, you know, like you can talk conspiracies, but it's a monopoly. Whatever you think it is, it is a monopoly, right? In Canada where it's, there's a monopoly on news. There's a monopoly on ca- on comedy, at least for, I mean, I've, I'm an anomaly in Canada right now. 
you know, nobody's coming out of Canada with American followers and showing up and touring, basically. Uh, I mean, Che Dorena did it. Uh, Ryan Long pretty much did it. But, you know, there's not hundreds and hundreds of people. But CBC themselves, they have a monopoly in Canada in terms of, look, there's so many comics you haven't heard of that were doing actually pretty good, and then they got hired by CBC, and then they just gave up. They stop doing anything interesting. They don't want to piss anybody off. They don't want to push any limits. They don't want to get fired. They're making a 40, 45K, which is like nothing Canadian. Um, maybe they're getting paid more these days, 50, 60. I don't know, longer you're there or something. But to be a starter writer for this hour's 22 minutes, and if you think the DEI is crazy in the States, the DEI for CBC Comedy is insane, okay? Their writer's room looks like a, a, a fucking uh, STD clinic in, in a gay district. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's trans and gays and random Muslim dudes. and <laughs> So, and good for them, you know, good for CBC, whatever. Do, do, do what you want, but they don't, they don't raise up talent, really, and the talent they do raise up that leaves doesn't go anywhere in the States for the most part. Some of it, like, a little bit, you know, I'm talking shit right now, but there are comics that they bigged up as being incredible, all this stuff. They use that to get their U.S. visa. They go to the U.S., and then nothing happens. They can't because, and they're just nobody. So, fuck you, CBC. Um, No, they just like, they're like, this comic's Asian and and says the exact thing that we want for our agenda. So we're going to put them on. And unfortunately, um, yeah, that's just the case. But yeah, that was the actual reason that CBC wanted to get off Twitter was because the Elon was calling them government funded media. And it's funny how they go, no, it's publicly funded. That's what the, that's what. The government says, oh, it's not government funded. It's publicly funded. You're paying for it. Okay, so if I don't like, what if I don't like it? Oh, well, you know, who gets to choose what programming you put, the public or the government? So go fuck yourself with that public funded shit. The reality is, um, it is, it's, it's agenda based media. It's agenda based media, and there's no, natural competitor in Canada uh, to CBC. You have Rebel News, which is completely self-funded. They don't get any money from the government. CBC gets like a billion, billions of dollars a year from the government to do all their shows and have their nice studios and for their executives to make 800K a year to do nothing and, and push DEI and push all this bullshit and bad entertainment and bad, boring podcasts and, and you know, all that shit. And, um, yeah, fuck them. Loving the show, want to support Ben? This shirt with Olivia Chow as the bat signal is available now, benbankus.com. Click on the merch link. Once again, if you want Ben Bankus merch, go to benbankus.com and click the merch button. People are talking about climate change all the time as if, you know, that's... It, it, climate change has become really just an advertisement for electric vehicles, right? Like everything is just climate change, climate change. Oh, what should I do? Buy an electric vehicle, buy this, buy that. So that's the one thing I like about climate change is it is still capitalistic. I just don't want to get to the point where it's like, oh, nobody owns a car and just every car you just tap it and you, I don't want to do that. I, I like having shit in my car, you know, throw a coffee cup. You know, I'm going to be an a and I don't want to get in a car that somebody else that made dirty and I'm going to leave these cars dirty, these these shareable cars of this future dystopian bullshit. But I don't give a fuck about the environment in the sense that, you know, I think it's fine. Really? I, I, I mean, we've been polluting it pretty bad. And this is all like we got a couple forest fires. Right. Not, no big deal. What was that like a week? And then, you know, oh, it snowed. Like, yeah, it's fucking winter. What are people talking about? Oh, my God, it's snowing so much. This is a climate crisis. And then you see an article. It's like 1999 was the worst snowfall. We Shut the fuck up. We only recorded this shit for like 400 years. We don't even know what the fucking weather was before that shit, dude. 
be when the natives, the natives didn't fucking record what the hell the, the weather, weather patterns were. So, you know, oh, it snowed. What am I going to do? I don't know. Watch Netflix, order Uber Eats, make a, make an immigrant battle the snow and bring you food. Why are you got to be out there? What, you know, what, what, what do you have to, what do you have to prove that you got to be in the snow? I get that people have to drive to and from work, call in sick, just be like, yo, I'm not driving in this shit, bitch. But anyway, my point is that I don't know if the snow is global warming. I don't know what's global warming. I, don't, I, I think, if anything, it's getting colder and scarier. It's not getting hotter and 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 more more fun like Jamaica or some shit. What I'm being told is that Teslas are only running half as far with the cold, which is significantly less but also if you have a tesla and you're trying to drive far distances in the cold like dude you bought the wrong car like get a motherfucking ford f-150 if you're driving every day in the snow i've never even really been in a tesla in the snow i don't i just don't think those cars are the, the one thing they have for them is they're very heavy but sometimes they just catch fire because they're too like greta thunberg -y. glad the houthi rebels are getting bombed um, I felt like I was the only person celebrating that people are like, how can you, why would America so evil? They're just protecting their shipping lanes. It's like, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Like, isn't that why we, why would we spend hundreds of billions of dollars a year on defense just to go, Oh, let's just let them blow up our fucking oil tank. No, you got also what's more environmentally friendly, letting the Houthis blow up a bunch of shit in the in the fucking ocean or blowing the shit out of them. And then, you know, it's not like they have great plumbing in their cities. Like I'm not, you know, they're, it, these these people got to stop with this. Oh, sauna was a beautiful. No, it's a shithole. Blow, blow it to shit, please. For the love of God. And same thing with the the. I mean, Gaza, they're not, I don't even know what's happening now. They're not blowing it up anymore. They're just, they're renovating. And uh, that's what's important. No, I, um, I don't know. Too, too, our society is very soft when it comes to war now. And it's just like, no, why are we doing this? It's like, because these people want us dead and we got to blow them up to show them, like, you know, this, this is America we're talking about. America. It's not just people go, oh, it's the white people. No, we're blowing them up for everybody. For every race is benefiting from blowing up the Houthis. Believe me. There's firing rockets into the fucking sea. No. Now North Korea is doing it too. Because all, the whole world's on edge. Maybe World War III would happen. But North Korea... Like, these, these countries are going to get demolished. Do you understand? Like, the U.S. is not going to allow shit to pop off the way that these countries these dictatorships say you know you got putin saying crazy shit oh you know we're gonna blow everything up with nukes i don't i don't believe it dude because they know they're gonna get fucked and and then what and then their population's dead and everybody's dead and i i don't i just don't see that happening it'd be funny if that's when the nuke alarm went off right now but look if it happens it happens people need to get over it but I don't think it's going to happen. So just, just relax. Everything that's been happening over the past couple of weeks has been really cool. And I feel really grateful to all the fans and the new followers who just showed up, just found out about me. What the fuck is up? Thank you for joining us on this ride to, uh, wherever the fuck we're going. Hell, never, never land over the rainbow. Uh, I'll do any movie they want. Um, I'll wear the dress. Guys, <laughs> you'd be surprised. I, I'll put a fat suit on and wear a dress to be in Hollywood. But seriously, I am so grateful that people found out about me and, and all the positive comments, lots of negative comments. And those people love me too because, you know, haters are your biggest, uh, biggest fans. They watch you more than people who like you, to be honest. People who really like you might have liked one post in the last month. Um, and people who hate you have seen every post. They don't like it, but they comment on it, which actually is better for the algorithm and all that shit. <clears throat> but it's been really cool to be part of my own, like, I don't, know, I don't know how to say this, but like part of my own success, an integral part of my own success, 
You know, it's not like even in the old days, I know people had to work hard, Jerry Seinfeld, all this stuff, but they went up there, they murdered, and that was that. They didn't have a whole business plan. They didn't have a whole, um, you know, like cult following that they like created from like people had not heard of these people before they went on um, Jimmy Fallon or Jerry Johnny Carson and, and shit like that. So it's really cool to to f- how I feel right now that I feel like, yeah, I made right de- the right decisions at the right times and I have a lot more decisions to make and I have a lot of work to do. A lot of people are congratulating me. They're like, you made it. And it's like, you, I haven't even stepped foot in the U.S. yet. Um, you know, we're almost at the point where we're going to be posting when the shows are coming up. The shows are going to be starting in May running through like June, like I'll probably just be touring and touring and touring at that after that point from May onward. What up everybody? I am going on tour in Canada with shows coming up as follows London, Ontario, June, Oh, sorry. London, Ontario, January 18th, Windsor, Ontario, January 25th, Waterloo, Ontario, February 2nd and February 3rd. Toronto, Ontario, February 21st, 8 p.m. and a 10.30 p.m. show. February 22nd in Burlington, we are almost opening up a second show. March 27th in Edmonton at the West Edmonton Mall comic strip. And my last Canadian dates are going to be on the East Coast in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia for the LOL Festival. So go get tickets for all those shows at benbankus.com slash live dash shows. <clears throat> and when we come back to Canada in the fall, in the late fall, we're going to be doing some crazy ass venues. So people need to get excited for that. My Canadian fans, I want you to know I'll never, ever forget you. I'll never, ever not show you love. I'll never talk about our, Cana- uh, you know, I'll never not talk about our Canadian bullshit going on and making fun of it because you guys were an integral part of my success from the ground up grassroots fans have been coming to shows since I was doing, you know, 50 person shows all the way up. Now we're doing 300, 400 person shows and and onward. So I respect and appreciate all my Canadian fans in in Vancouver and in, um, in Calgary and Edmonton, Kelowna. I know Kelowna wants me back and Winnipeg, Saskatoon and, Montreal, Montreal, I got, we're going to come back to. Obviously, Toronto, Ottawa, London, Ontario, Barrie. A lot of fans in this country, so I want you guys to know I appreciate you. And to the American fans, what the fuck is up? Welcome to the party. We're about to fuck, right? Like, we are going to fuck. When I get to fucking the States and we, we're just ripping sold-out shows... Day one, stepping into the uh, the territory, and uh, just getting getting ripped, both physically and mentally, and going up there on the stage. We're gonna be doing some funny bones and stuff like that to start some improvs, probably too. And we're gonna have a great time. We're gonna meet you guys, and we're gonna laugh. And we're going to uh, create some memories, some Jewish memories. No, I'm kidding. There's going to be no Jews allowed at any of my shows. And uh, <laughs> Jews love that joke, by the way. That's the Jews' favorite joke is no Jews allowed. Oh, let's remember the time when we went running everything. No, I, I think we're good with the Jews running everything. I think that that's, that's the status quo. I don't think we should change that. For instance... Is there any industry where if we just said to the Jews, okay, you can't run this anymore, we need a DEI, we need to get black Filipino Chinese like on the on the board of directors, would that improve things? I don't know. I look to Harvard University, which is now the easiest university to get into in the US, especially if you are Muslim or believe in uh jihad very easy to get in but yeah i love my jewish people man i'm excited actually to live in the u.s and be around more jews because toronto is a very jewy place as far as canada goes and it's probably the i think the most jews are here or in montreal i forget in canada i think it's like here montreal edmonton 
and Winnipeg have like the most Jews. But in the States, there's 7 million Jews. In Canada, there's only four, under 400,000 Jews. So it feels like there's a lot of Jews in Canada when there's actually not. And there's way more Jews in the States, 7 million versus 400,000. And those are, I, I want to meet my Jewish people, man, because I have a Jewish story to tell, right? I want to tell my, my, my Jewish story on, on Joe Rogan and on, on these other podcasts that I, I appreciate and listen to. And <clears throat> the Jewish stories that, you know, my grandparents on my dad's side, so technically I'm not Jewish because my mom's not, but um, well, she almost converted anyway for her different husband. But <laughs> but my dad's parents were Holocaust survivors and they legitimately escaped concentration camps and basically being slaves to the Germans so that I could be here and be racist for you guys and, and make you laugh. So that's pretty big. Also, I want to shout out a couple people who I didn't shout out in my last episode. Um, of course, I shouted out JJ, my new agent from uh, the U.S., from 33 and West. Uh, want to shout out my website guy, Matt Israelson. Doesn't get more Jewish than that as a last name is Matt Israelson. There's actually another guy I want to shout out. His first name is Israel. Can you believe it? This is getting, so, this is crazy right now. The guy who introduced me to the agent that I have right now, his name is Israel. And the guy who does my website's last name is Israelson. But website, we're always working on it. We're always trying to fucking make it pop. And right now it looks really good. You can buy tickets just from benbankus.com now. You don't have to go into live shows. You just scroll right down and it's all the shows are there. So you should definitely go check that out. Check out benbankus.com. We've had a ton of traction. If you're US, by the way, we're going to be letting people know first on Patreon. So patrons will get a link to here's all of the shows. They're ready to go for the tour. Um, so support me on Patreon, obviously. And um, then next, like a week later, we're going to post, we're going to send out a mass email to my email subs. So they're going to be get second dibs on tickets for the U.S. And then we'll post, obviously, on social media. All the social media people, followers will get <clears throat> access to buy tickets. So that's kind of how the hierarchy works of... Posting shit. It's going to be the same for my Canadian fall dates, which we'll be posting only a few months after the U.S. dates. But, uh, yeah, so Matt, thank you. And um, a lot of other people that believe in me and not to, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm winning a fucking Oscar right now, but uh, this is my fucking podcast. So if I want to act like I'm winning an award, I'll act like I'm winning a motherfucking award. My mom who has dementia and is in a nursing home and loved me more than anything and brought me to my first comedy show that I ever did and believed in me. And I remember my friend annoying me in the car and trying to listen to music loud. And I was like, I don't want to listen to music. I'm like on my way to my first show. And it's like an open mic. And my mom's driving. She's like to my friend, she's like, shut up, Gabe. He's going to do this for a living. And, um, so she always believed in me. So that was big. I was actually like when the followers started really going up and then the Fox News thing happened and I killed it on that. Like I got emotional after that because I was like, holy fuck, dude, my mom would be so proud right now. My dad was proud and all that. But it's funny because my dad was always the one who never believed in me when I was starting comedy. Right. He was the one calling my mom going, is Ben still joking around? He's a Lithuanian Jew. Is Ben still joking around? That's that's what he would ask her. Or what was the other thing? He'd go, he, he would call my mom and go, oh, he's, because my mom, well, he's doing a lot of shows on us. You'd be surprised how many shows he's doing. And he would go, shows and shows and nothing to show for it. That's what he would say about me doing shows when I was like 22 and grinding out all these like shitty little free shows and open mics and doing, you know, 15 bucks here. I rarely would get paid for, for most shit until I was in my mid-20s at least because I started comedy when I was 19 the first time, right? But, yeah, 
means a lot. Excited. And with all that being said, this is just the beginning. But I think you need to celebrate your wins. One of my good friends has taught me that. We went to, by the way, the picture of me with the shirt open, the shirt that was at Blue Bloods. People were like, he's at Drake's house. I was like, no, it's, it's, it's a steakhouse in Toronto. And it was a pretty fun time. And just fucking ate some bananas and some steak. Doing the whole satanic bit, pretending to be satanic, and people like it because it's funny and it's relevant. And I gotta leave Toronto because Olivia Chow's raising the taxes on the motherfucking houses by like eight percent or something. And that's gonna be trans all all the. It's so funny how it's like, oh she, oh we're gonna raise a tax on the, we'll raise a tax on the homeowner, and make a why. That means that all everybody's rent's going to go up. How are you? It's weird. It's like, oh, we're communists, but we're not going to do everything to fuck you over and make it even more expensive. Like, how does that make any sense? Uh, it doesn't, folks. And taxing people, overtaxing is not the answer. Um, people should not are overtaxed in Canada. If they were taxed less, they'd have bigger opportunities to make more money, which would in turn allow people to be more successful in this country and give a greater um, contribution back to society. The U S has people who give huge contributions to society from culture, from this, that why look Drake, Drake is given a, the only reason Drake has given so much back to Canada is because he's big in the U S right. Recently, most deaf was talking shit about Drake and saying like, oh, he's like pop music. And it's like, well, how is that even a diss? Like, it's like, I, Drake has a song called Pop Star. I tweeted about it. I just deleted it because people were getting mad and being like, Drake's a fucking, you know, he's fucking DMing underage chicks. And then, and then I look at the guy and he's got like 29 followers. And it's like, what? what's true? I don't know what's true, but Drake, I love his music. It's fucking good. Most deaf, I listen to... Miss Fat Booty, what, once a year? And then go, yeah, it wasn't as good as I remember it. So I'm defending Drake because he's I'm from Toronto, and I think most deaf kind of sucks now. And he did a couple movies and made his money and spent it all. And instead of trying to achieve bigger and bigger greatness, he just wanted to be a, a an afterthought. And that's okay, most deaf. You can be an afterthought. I loved you on Chappelle's show and the stuff you did with Chappelle, but even Chappelle's like not ready to work with you right now because you need to make an album that's good first. Um, and uh, that's just how it is. It's show business, baby. Drake has a guy come after him like every couple of years and go, yo, that's not rap. And then Drake's just like, I make this much money. How much do you make? Which is the classic Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross scene where it's like, you know, See this watch? This watch is worth more than your car. I made $973,000 last year. How much you make? That's why I'm me and you're nothing. That's a line from Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. But that's the vibe that Drake gives off when he gets attacked by these guys. And I think that that's, you know, that's this how it is. There'll be comics coming after me going, oh, Ben sold out. It's like, you do something then. You do something. Make a fucking, make a video that goes viral. You can't. You can't do it. You try every day. You can't do it. So suck my dick. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody, for watching my show. Please share with your friends. If you love the podcast, let us know in the comments. Don't be shy. Make videos of yourself watching a podcast. Post it on your Instagram story. Tag me. Tag the podcast. And we will definitely share it. We really appreciate you guys listening. Thank you so much. Good night.